In the unforgiving calculus of modern naval warfare, where every bolt, every composite panel, and every line of code can determine the outcome of a battle, the most ancient and implacable enemy is not an opposing fleet, but the horizon itself. The gentle, inexorable curvature of the Earth creates a vast, hidden battle space where sea-skimming anti-ship missiles and low-observable aircraft can approach a surface fleet with lethal speed, remaining utterly invisible to the most powerful shipborne radars until mere moments before impact. This fundamental tyranny of physics dictates that the only true defense, the only way to reclaim the tactical initiative, is to lift one's eyes above the waves. For decades, the definitive solution has been the fixed-wing airborne early warning and control, AEWNC aircraft, a high-flying, long-endurance sentinel that can gaze down upon this hidden realm from an altitude where the horizon is a distant, strategic abstraction rather than an immediate tactical boundary. Compared to the short-range, low-altitude helicopters that other navies are forced to rely upon as a compromised substitute, a fixed-wing platform offers vastly superior endurance, a higher operational ceiling, and a radar aperture powerful enough to transform the entire tactical landscape, turning a reactive naval group into a proactive, dominant force. It is within this unyielding strategic context that the Xi'an KJ-600 emerges, not merely as another aircraft, but as what many analysts describe with a notable lack of hyperbole as the final piece of the puzzle for the People's Liberation Army Navy, PLAN. Its appearance is the most tangible evidence of a profound and irreversible doctrinal shift marking the transition from a coastal defense force historically reliant on the protective umbrella of land-based air power to an expeditionary blue water navy with the ambition and increasingly the capability to project power across the globe. The very existence of the KJ-600 is inextricably linked to and indeed was necessitated by the development of China's Type 003 Fujian aircraft carrier. The plan's first two carriers, the Liaoning and Shandong, rely on a short takeoff but arrested recovery, Stobar Ski Jump System, a configuration that, while simpler and cheaper, is physically incapable of launching a heavy, relatively low-thrust, non-afterburning aircraft like the KJ-600. The monumental national decision to equip the Fujian with a catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery, Catabar system, specifically an advanced electromagnetic aircraft launch system, EMAILS, would have been strategically incoherent without a dedicated AEWNC platform designed from the outset to exploit this new and complex capability. The carrier enables the plane, and the plane, in turn, gives the carrier its true strategic purpose, transforming it from a regional platform into an instrument of global reach and a peer competitor on the world's oceans. The developmental lineage of the KJ-600 can be traced directly to the JZY-01, a land-based test bed derived from the rugged Y-7 transport airframe, which served to validate the core aerodynamic concepts and flight characteristics of a high-wing quad-tail AEWNC platform in the early 2010s. Following its maiden flight on August 29, 2020, the KJ-600 program progressed at a remarkable pace with intensive trials involving at least four to six prototypes underway by late 2023, culminating in its successful integration with the Fujian in 2025. Its physical configuration is defined by a high straight wing for maximum lift at lower speeds, a fuselage length of 18.14 meters, a wingspan of 25 meters, and a height of 5.72 meters. The aircraft's striking external resemblance to the Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye is undeniable and has been the subject of much commentary, often simplistic. However, to dismiss it as a mere carbon copy is to overlook the powerful and often underestimated forces of convergent evolution in aerospace engineering. 
when the immutable laws of physics, the specific aerodynamic challenges of low-speed carrier approaches, and the unforgiving dimensional constraints of a flight deck are the primary design drivers, it is hardly surprising that independent engineering teams, decades apart, arrive at remarkably similar solutions. There are, after all, only so many ways to solve this particular, very difficult problem. A closer examination reveals critical indigenous adaptations for the brutal, corrosive, and high-impact environment of naval operations. These include an exceptionally robust tricycle landing gear built to withstand the controlled violence of catapult launches and arrested landings, an indispensable tail hook for recovery, and a complex, high-strength folding wing mechanism that allows for compact storage within the crowded, meticulously organized confines of a carrier's flight deck and hangar bay. The airframe's construction reportedly involves the widespread use of advanced composite materials, specifically carbon fiber of the T-1000 series in the fuselage, wings, and tail structure. This is not a trivial detail, such materials are essential for achieving the required structural strength and rigidity to absorb the immense repetitive stresses of catabar operations without incurring a prohibitive weight penalty that would compromise payload and endurance. The large dorsal radome, the aircraft's most prominent and defining feature, is necessarily constructed from specialized dielectrically pure materials like cyanate ester or epoxy-based prepregs, ensuring maximum transparency to the powerful radar waves it emits and receives, preventing distortion or attenuation of the very signals that are its reason for being. One of the most telling indicators of the KJ-600's unique design heritage and a direct refutation of the blind copy narrative lies in its tail configuration. The E-2 Hawkeye features a distinctive quad fin H-tail, a design necessary to provide sufficient yaw stability while keeping the vertical surfaces out of the turbulent prop wash and the radar's main beam. However, its two outermost vertical stabilizers have a noticeable anhedral angling downwards. This was not an aerodynamic choice, but a pragmatic compromise, a workaround to meet the restrictive hangar deck height of the older Essex-class carriers for which the E-2 was originally designed in the 1950s. The KJ-600, by contrast, features four perfectly upright outer fins. This subtle but significant difference demonstrates that the aircraft was designed from a clean sheet for a large, modern carrier without the same historical height limitations. Its designers were free to optimize the tail's aerodynamic efficiency without this legacy constraint, a clear indicator of independent design tailored to a modern platform. The heartbeat of the machine is a pair of Zhuzhou Wojiang 6C, FWJ 6C, turboprop engines each generating approximately 3,805 kilobars, 5103 HP. These engines are a continued, mature development of the Soviet-era Ivchenko AI-20, a design choice that likely prioritized proven reliability and industrial familiarity over cutting-edge performance for the aircraft's absolutely critical propulsion system. These engines turn large, six-bladed, constant-speed propellers that are also capable of feathering and reversing thrust for enhanced maneuverability and shorter landing rolls on deck. This six-bladed configuration stands in contrast to the eight-bladed, scimitar-shaped propellers of the modern E-2D Hawkeye, a difference driven by the specific power, torque, and acoustic characteristics of the respective power plants and a desire to optimize efficiency and reduce vibration. These specifications translate into a performance envelope precisely tailored for the carrier environment. A maximum speed of 693 km/h allows it to maintain pace with the launch and recovery cycles of the J-15T and J-35 jets it is designed to support. A high service ceiling of 15,000 meters, 50,000 feet, is perhaps its most critical flight parameter as altitude directly extends the radar's line of sight to the horizon, pushing back the boundary at which it can detect low-flying threats by hundreds of kilometers. 
with a combat range of 1,250 kilometers and a ferry range of 2,800 kilometers. The KJ-600 can remain on station for several hours at a significant distance from the carrier, providing a persistent, unblinking eye in the sky for the entire strike group. Its gross weight of 30,181 ki makes it fundamentally incompatible with ski jump carriers, rendering it entirely dependent on the immense power of a catapult. Specifically, the finely tunable acceleration provided by the Fujian's emails, which can smoothly launch such a large, non-afterburning airframe to flight speed without overstressing the crew or the airframe. Of course, the airframe is merely the vessel for the aircraft's true purpose, its all-seeing eye. The large dorsal rotodome houses what is widely assessed to be an advanced active electronically scanned array, AISA, radar system. While exact specifications remain classified, it is reported to provide full 360-degree coverage with a detection range against conventional fighter-sized aircraft of up to 500 kilometers. The rotating dome suggests a hybrid architecture analogous to the E-2D's AN-APY-9 radar, which combines mechanical rotation for complete and consistent azimuthal coverage with the agility of electronic scanning for instantaneous beam steering, rapid multi-target tracking, and increased resistance to sophisticated electronic countermeasures. While some of China's land-based AEWNC aircraft, like the KJ-500, utilize a fixed three-panel AES array in a static dome, the hybrid rotodome approach is a proven and effective solution for the unique demands of carrier-based operations where the aircraft's orientation relative to the threat axis is constantly changing. The system's most strategically significant capability is its purported ability to detect and track low observable aircraft like the F-22 and F-35. This is likely achieved by operating in lower frequency bands, such as ultra-high frequency, UHF, where the physical shaping and radar absorbent materials used in stealth designs are inherently less effective. This mirrors the design philosophy of the American AAAPY-9, suggesting a direct and deliberate effort to counter a key technological advantage of Western Air Forces. Here, however, the KJ-600 may possess a subtle, but crucial advantage born of timing. The E-2D's core AN-APY-9 radar was developed in the late 2000s with the aircraft reaching operational capability around 2014. The KJ-600 is a product of the late 2010s and early 2020s. This decade-plus generation gap in electronics means the Chinese system is almost certainly built with newer, faster, and more powerful processors and semiconductors, a field where Chinese industry has made massive strides. This could translate into more sophisticated tracking algorithms, better resistance to jamming, superior data fusion capabilities, and the ability to process far more data in real time, giving the newer system a potential raw hardware advantage, even if the operational software and doctrine are less mature. Inside the fuselage, a crew of three to four operators, in addition to the two pilots, will function as the airborne battle managers of the carrier strike group. The KJ-600 will serve as a mobile airborne command post at sea, a central network node for command and control. Battle Management, C2BM. It will fuse its own powerful radar picture with data from escorting destroyers, friendly fighters, and potentially satellites, creating a single, unified, and comprehensive operational picture of the battle space. From this privileged vantage point, it can vector J-35s for intercepts, guide long-range missiles launched from destroyers hundreds of kilometers away, and coordinate the complex multi-domain ballet of modern naval warfare. The operational deployment of the KJ-600 will act as a profound force multiplier, fundamentally altering the combat potential of a planned carrier strike group. It extends the fleet situational awareness bubble from tens of kilometers to hundreds, providing the invaluable gift of time. Time to detect, classify, track, 
and engage threats in a layered, defense-in-depth strategy. It will work in direct synergy with the carrier's air wing, acting as the eyes and ears for the J-35 stealth fighters and J-15T multi-role jets. By detecting and tracking targets from afar, the KJ-600 can use secure, high bandwidth data links to cue the fighters, allowing them to approach their targets while keeping their own radars silent to maximize their stealth advantage and achieve tactical surprise. This capability allows a planned carrier strike group to project its own powerful anti-access area denial, A2 AD bubble, far into the Pacific, challenging the freedom of movement of opposing naval forces and profoundly complicating their operational calculus. The successful integration of the KJ-600 aboard the E-mails equipped Fujian marks China's arrival as a peer competitor in the technologically demanding and exclusive club of carrier aviation. Yet, this monumental achievement comes with immense, almost unprecedented, challenges. The plan's decision to introduce a new carrier, a new launch system, a new stealth fighter, and a new AEW and C aircraft simultaneously is an engineer's nightmare and a project manager's migraine an undertaking of staggering ambition and high risk. While it demonstrates an incredible industrial capacity, it also creates a monumental integration challenge. The U.S. Navy developed its capabilities incrementally over a century, typically introducing new aircraft onto existing carriers or commissioning new carriers with proven, well-understood air wings. The plan is attempting to master a completely new ecosystem at once, where each component is individually complex and prone to the kind of teething problems that plague the U.S. Navy's own experience with emails on the USS Gerald R. Ford. This creates a massive software and humanware deficit. The hardware may be on the deck, but the doctrine, training pipelines, and institutional knowledge required to wield this complex system of systems effectively under the immense stress of combat must now be built from the ground up through painstaking trial and error. The path forward for the KJ-600 platform includes clear avenues for modernization. The current WJ-6C engines could eventually be replaced by the more modern and powerful WJ-10 turboprop, which would improve overall performance, fuel efficiency, and time on station. The mission systems will undoubtedly undergo continuous software and hardware upgrades to counter emerging threats and incorporate new capabilities like AI-assisted target recognition and battle management. Furthermore, the robust airframe is a prime candidate for adaptation into other vital carrier support roles, most notably as a carrier onboard delivery, COD, aircraft to ferry personnel and high priority cargo to the fleet at sea. This would mirror the evolution of the E-2 Hawkeye airframe into the C-2 Greyhound, indicating a long-term systematic approach to building a complete and self-sufficient carrier aviation ecosystem. Ultimately, while the KJ-600 represents a monumental technological leap, its true effectiveness will be determined not by its specification sheet but by the human element. The aircraft is the indispensable tool that finally allows the plan to contest the blue water oceans, but its successful employment requires a generation of highly skilled pilots, operators, and commanders forged in the crucible of realistic, high-intensity training. The gap between a successful catapult test and a combat-ready, 24-7, all-weather operational capability is vast and filled with unglamorous, painstaking work. After all, even the most advanced AESA radar is of little use if the crew is still trying to figure out where the coffee machine is, or if the launch procedure requires a ritual dance perfected only by one senior chief petty officer who is two days from retirement. The KJ-600 is the symbol of China's naval ambition. Its effective operation will be the proof of its arrival,